Good evening. We will start the meeting at 714. Uh, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance first. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will do a roll call. Um, that's all right. Ken Dickerson? Brett Gagnon. Present. And Randy Brownrig, we are present. We have a quorum tonight, which is three. Um, this is a special meeting to go over um, our budget for next uh, fiscal year. And this will be just uh, trying to figure out the numbers as we go along. So there won't be any special um, way of doing it. Just help us out, Ken, because you're the expert on this one. All right? Well, I'll do what I can. Well, you got, you got everything right there. So. Um, I know that um, we have some numbers from Amy Sumagulo that we sh need to do. Um, should we add 25% to that um, from the 51, was it 51,000 last year or 30, 36? this time last year so she had for Robinson Pond 10 days of dash services uh, estimated about a thousand dollars a day for ten thousand dollar budget and then Arnick Pond had five days of dash services which is five thousand plus a herbicide treatment full pond herbicide treatment of twenty three thousand so there was 28 for Ardenick and 10 for Robinson for a total of $38,000. And that's before any grant reimbursement. Okay. So according to... So the, go ahead. Uh, just to keep in mind, we also have the Lake Host Program and the um, Volunteer Lake Assessment Program Water Testing. It has to be added into the budget. So last year, the professional services line item was 48626 And so that was the bulk of the budget. Yeah, this, this is here that I got from Dorena um, Herbicide Grant um, up to Total cost was 44,159 and a grant was 11,039. The town cost was 33,120. And then for the dash for both um, was 19,600. The grant was 4,900. Town cost was 14,700. The total town cost was 47820 That was for this year. And they matched the 25%. The 25% right. was $15,939 for grant money. And then for the Dash Aquologic, both was 19600 Well, wait a minute. The Okay. That's probably, I think you're looking at one pawn versus. Right. Y you have to say which pawn that is. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I actually. Oh, no, you're right. Do you want to write, I, you probably want to write this down because. Okay. Lake management. We need to go on the non-reimbursed cost because we don't know what the reimbursement yeah we don't know what the percentage is well it, this shows 25 percent but we there's no guarantee that it's going to be that's 25%. true it's a true statement and, but with that said it has been either 25 percent or 35 percent probably for the last five years yeah so the reimbursement was um for like that's march 358 dollars 
And then the next one was 250 for reimbursement. That's also in March. And then another one in July 11th of this year was 3944 August 15th was $650. And September 9th was $4,000. $789. But, I mean, all those individual costs are kind of irrelevant. Right. So, I mean, I think what we need to write down is our, you said something about the total cost between both ponds was 47000 something. Yeah. Because and then we have to add the figuring that the lake host and the and the uh, water testing are going to stay the same. We have to add that to it. Right. So hold on a second. See where That's, we're at. Yeah. And that's if we and and that's figuring or leaving. A window of opportunity to treat both Robinson and Arnick Pond again next year, even though yeah. hopefully we only have to do the herbicide, Robinson and not herbicide Arnick. and dash, right? Well, there's a chance that we won't do a full herbicide treatment in Arnick because you usually don't do back-to-back -back herbicide treatments. Full, you know, the twenty-three thousand that we spent this year on Arnick right. hopefully won't be repeated next year. But the quick guidance that we got from Amy Smagula was it was too early to determine how effective the treatment was on Otternick because the boosters went in late. Basically, it was she's really busy at the end of the season checking all the lakes. Right. And she hasn't come back down to Hudson yet. So because she needs to do the northern lakes first because mm -hmm. it gets colder up there first. So, so should we add that grant? So she, add that she can't into our budget. She, so, if we're trying to cover those in costs in advance, then we would go with the full amount that we expended this okay, year. That, well, total cost for this bef before grants is sixty-five thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars. That's for. Um, the herbicide grants for both ponds and dash for both ponds. Was That's before the grants come into place. Was that that was sixty five thousand? Sixty five thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars. Then then the grants come in. Well, that that to me is we we need to, when when you present the budget. Right. I mean I I'm I'm thinking that I'm not in favor of presenting that number. Boris Luckman because it's it seems like it's too high of a jump. Well, with that's everything this, else that's that we what this year do. was. Right. That's before the grants. Right, but what we factored in last, you got to remember, in in 2019 we had 35,600, and that covered the Lake Host program and the water testing, which is like an additional 10 grand on top that's of what you just said. So if we had sixty-five thousand, that's plus the ten grand. That's roughly seventy-five thousand. We've never been that high. So um, it depend. You know, I I would only do that if we were Hang on. if we found uh, we were overspent this year Hang for some second. reason. All right. So wait, that was too. Actually, it's a little bit less. Fiscal five two thousand nineteen to two thousand twenty. So the actual total cost for both for both without grants was sixty three thousand seven hundred and fifty nine. For a town cost after the grants was forty seven thousand eight hundred and twenty dollars. That was for both for this year before the grants came into place. The grants that came into place for uh, herbicide was 11,039 and then dash was 4,900 for a town cost of 47,820 but total cost was 63,000 that was budgeted in 
before the grants went into place. So I have a thought. Yes. If I could. What I would do is um, figure that we're going to get 20% reimbursement. It said, minimum? well, it's been 25 the last few years when you, right. when you go but look at this. So, well, one year, hold on, just give me a second. Um, one year in 2017, there was a there was 30 percent in the year before. Yeah, 2017 was 30 percent, but after that, everything else was 25 percent. So we should figure at least 25 percent, right? I would. I was going to suggest that we factor in 20 percent just to be conservative. Okay. All right, 20 percent. We can be can't conservative. bank on it. True statement. So. I would take this, what was it, 65000 subtract out 20% from that. I can get my calendar. But so you're figuring 20%. Around fifty thousand, plus or minus some change. Okay, so if we did fifty thousand for both pawns, then you have to add the nineteen hundred for the V lap, and add eighty seven twenty six for Lake Coast program. Okay, hold on a second, Lake Coast. What'd you say? 820? 820? 8726. 8726. Okay. All right. So, another. Th so what are we at at that point? We're at uh, 58,726. But now the thought is, is that we have other expenses, professional service line items that we'd like to add into the budget. Right. And how does that weigh with the pawn treatments? Because we could just say no we're not going to treat um, Arnick Pond and, and give it a year to um, have that treatment aside but we don't know what the results are from the treatment right that's that's the catch and I haven't gotten a follow-up from Anderson Magoula and you won't get it until, you know, it, until the budget's pretty much already determined. It, right. Yeah, she may not be able to know the results for at least another month or two. Right. But in the event that we, you know, we might be able to ask her. You actually usually she provides her recommendations in January. But we might be able to get that. Um, yeah, it would be tough to get that before our hearing, but it might be worth it to right. ask again to get an update. So I think that's where we have maybe some flexibility to talk about things with the Board of Selectmen to let them know that the costs have increased just for that portion of the budget by about $10,000. Mm-hmm. So it increased 10000 from last year, which was an increase as well? Well, he's, Randy's saying that his total figure was around 58000 We were at 48626 last year for that part. Yeah. That was the professional service line item, and that was an increase of 
oh, you know, roughly eight thousand dollars from the previous year, which isn't usual. That was abnormal. And that's just yeah. So, is that what I'm going to budget in for the conservation professional services? Fifty-eight thousand seven hundred twenty-six. Well, it, it if do we we need to put in the timber harvest uh, timber management plan into that? That's that's another six thousand six thousand four hundred twenty-two dollars and eighty cents. And so. and we should put in the. Uh, the Rangers Drive management plan into that to cover that as well. That was fourteen fifty five. Yeah. So, so I'm going to write some of these numbers down while I'm listening to you guys here. So um, you said the did we have a definitive total on the lake's cost. You said fifty eight. Was that the number you guys came up with? Yeah. Sixty four to twenty two. Yeah. Eighty. I think. So. Well, that's where we're at right now. Okay. Uh, yeah. Seven. Before we add in anything else to eight. it. And while he's Seven. doing that, uh, the expense for the GIS mapping, did we, we've expensed that this year? 7000 I believe we did, right? We voted to expense the, the cost of GIS mapping. Um, what did that come out of this year? Do we know? I'll ask him in a second. So we're looking at uh, sixty-six thousand six hundred and three dollars and eighty cents, roughly. And just so I follow you, do my guys want to write that down myself? So what oh, were sure. broken down into? Yeah. So um, the Lake Coast program was eight, or roughly around eight thousand seven hundred twenty-six. Eight thousand seven hundred twenty-six. Yeah. Got it. Um. The other is for six thousand six thousand four hundred twenty-two for. That's, is that Rangers, Rangers and? Oh well, you, we, well, well. First, you get, you get, you went with Lake Coast program. So uh, you're wait. talking about lakes. So you got the. Do you have the 1900 for the the water testing? No, I didn't get the that. V, that's the V the V lab, which is volunteer lake assessment program. Okay, that's water testing. Okay. Water testing. That's 1900. I didn't add that in. It's another nineteen hundred. So now we're looking at another sixty seven thousand five hundred and three dollars and eighty cents. So <clears throat> what it um Lake Coast and then the and then the seven thousand eight hundred and seventy seven is for that's Rangers management plans. Say that again. Rangers. Was it? Rangers was. Um, it was the fourteen hundred fifty-five. Fourteen hundred fifty-five. That was Rangers, and then the other one, the six six thousand four hundred twenty-two and eighty cents. That was the one that we were just talking about earlier. Um, that Eric sent you for the quote on. Yeah, I just ran to the nearest dollar. Sixty-five hundred. The it's just an initial quote, but we need to. Right. You know, that's the quote for. Um, that, that's an initial, I almost call it a ballpark quote. Right. At this point in time. For but that, that's musquash. For musquash. And that was the 6,500. Yeah. That's just professional services we're talking about. Correct. Yep. Understood. So. And. Think if there was anything else that would. So to to recap here, if I'm getting this all right, yeah. we had the water test at 1900, we had the lake host program at 8726, we had the potential musquash uh, forestry plan at 6500, correct? And then we had the Rangers Drive Town Forest uh, forestry plan at 1455. Okay, and then the big whopper was the what was the 58. 50,000. 50,000. Yeah. And that is for the, what's the term? Right. Treatments? Oh, treatment for Atonic and uh, Robinson. Okay. And that's 50,000 even? 
No, well, that's just a ballpark figure. Wait, okay. All right. I'll have to figure out the numbers some more. All right, so I'm, I'm getting some of these down. We can add up. And then the 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 repair and refresh, I think. No, nope, that doesn't fall on Pacific. Not in here. Okay. No. Actually, we, just a thought here, is that we are going to expend the money for the Rangers Drive management plan in this fiscal year. To when we voted on it already, didn't we? Because he's going to do the work in January through March, say. So he'll definitely be the man. We'll have a management and plan in hand, and he will have been voiced for that by this end of the spring. January spring. Yeah, I'll be in. The so that's the fourteen hundred, right? Fourteen fifty-five. Yes. All right. So, yeah, so, so we might that. be, able, and it looks like we, but we might want to. I'm not sure how you want to cover that because you may want to have that in the budget so that they can, as a line item, so they can see what the costs are for that property versus musquash. I don't know. Do we have that? So you're saying that that 1455 from Rangers Drive could be expensed in this year and that would come out of professional services from this year's budget? Is that correct? Well, yeah, the, the money is going to be expended this year. So okay. So it's really coming out of this year's budget. That's All right. And do, do we have that money in this year's budget? I, I, no, I, don't, I mean, I haven't got, we haven't got an update okay. on the accounts. And I was supposed to get that tonight. Okay. Anyways. anyways. My, my guess is, is that we don't, because you said that we, we, even after the reimbursement, We've spent forty-seven thousand dollars on pro professional services, mm -hmm. and or was it uh, was it closer to forty-eight thousand? Forty-eight thousand. Mm -hmm. It's closer to forty-eight thousand, so yeah. that would only leave like six hundred dollars left, and that's there's probably some other extraneous service that we didn't account for. So no, we're we've overspent this year. Yeah. On professional services, to, by a little bit. Yeah, okay. By maybe possibly a few few thousand dollars at least. Okay, so that, that begs the same question again then. Do we, are we tacking on Rangers Drive forestry plan to this year's over budgeted budget? Or are we gonna try to roll it into next year to plan for it? Yeah, I would add, I, I'd add into next year's, but it's kind of an after the fact thing, but Correct. I think we need to put that line item in there just to- We need to put it back in. Yes, I think it. it makes okay. sense for now, it's safer. Yeah, I kind of waffled on that, but. No, no, you didn't want, so no, that's the only part. We were already substantially higher so than we were last year. I believe what Ken's trying to do, if I understand correctly, is we're going to incur the 1455 for the Rangers Town Forest Management Plan this year, but we're already over budget this year. So if we put it in next year's budget, you know, it, it'll kind of make up for that when we give it back. I'm thinking that's what you're trying to do. Yeah, and I, I think that the, the expenses that we have potentially justify itself and we might be able to and in the big picture maybe in just in case someone else is watching the musk wash the fee for the musk wash plan if we actually do a harvest will get it'll basically nullify itself because right. the revenue that we'll get from the harvest will easily pay for the management plan and you know, as the Kimball Hill Forest Harvest did. Got it. And we actually, yeah, we, we have a, yeah, we have money from the Kimball Hill Forest timber harvest that we'd be able to use, but we can't, from what I understand. Correct. At the moment, so. So for the. We, it's, it becomes, those other management plans become an upfront expense that we do have to account for in next year's budget as a result in full. Yeah, and for the for listeners at home too. So we were talking a little bit about um, to use a forestry plan to have a forestry account. We have to use it on forestry properties, and right now legally we only have two legal town forests. So one of our goals outside of this is to make more of our conservation properties town forest properties, so we can use the town harvest revenues to maintain all the properties. The issue right now is since we only have two properties that are town forest. 
we can only use the forestry revenue for those two properties, unfortunately. That, that's the overall issue. So that conversation brings up other tasks to make. Well, that's, but that's a little different than what I was told. I mean, actually, that would mean that we could use some of the revenue from the Kimball Hill Town Forest to pay for the Ranges Town Forest Management Plan. Yes, that would be correct, but we need a warrant article for that to, to, to <laughs> utilize. you want to have a warrant article for $1,455? Yeah. Well, so that's, uh, from what I understand that's from reading the, the, the New Hampshire rules on the Forestry Commission funds, unlike the Conservation Commission fund or the budget, we're supposed to put a forestry, plan, forestry budget together, just like we would for the town, and then we put it to a warrant article and we ask the voters, can we spend our forestry money on an annual budget including blah, 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 blah. Okay. So instead of just one plan, you'd have multiple for the year. Yeah, so maybe that's something that good to do, I would say, for, um, you know, March 2020 as opposed to next year for the, you know, Warren article. So you're saying put it as a Warren article for March 2020 or 21? I mean 2021. Okay. All right. So my page again. So I guess yeah. the the idea then is, Randy, if you're overhearing this a little bit, yeah, is uh, uh, this coming year it's kind of a transition year. We don't really have a lot of town forests, and we're just getting a forestry fund. So we're going to put some of the forestry management plans in our budget for this year alone, with the thought that we're going to transition more properties into town forest, and we'll plan in 2021 to have a warrant article with a separate budget for the forestry actions. Yeah, because I I, mean, I don't think that. The board of selectmen want to have minor warrant articles. Agreed. They want a, an yeah. annual plan for the entire forestry budget for that, multiple. That plans. might get be able to get wrapped. Depending on how it's worded, it might be able to get wrapped into something that you know something else. That's I larger. think that makes sense to me. If we consider next year a so. transition year, 2021 will have a a full budget for forestry actions. Seems fair. Okay. So, <clears throat> are we looking good on? Oh, so. I'm looking at a total of right around $69,958.80. That's for the entire budget? Or that's just that's for, just for professional, professional, okay. professional services? Got it. Okay. So we... Yeah, mm -hmm. because all... all, all well, I, I didn't... Uh, you, you're doing the math, not, not I. Okay. Uh, that's what we're looking at so far. That's just professional services. So are we going to move on or are we done with professional services? I, th I think we should stop there for the moment and take a look at the other line items. Okay. I would and we can always come back to professional mm -hmm. services to kind of yeah. recap. All right. And I, I would, you know, I think that's fine. <coughs> I would may recommend that maybe we give you permission to approve that number tonight if we all agree. And then if you can work with the town engineer and other town staff to right. adjust that as necessary and just sign off when you, when you fix it. Um, so if I may lead, then I guess with the first line item, the small equipment maintenance line item. Uh, so if we jump to that, for the viewers at home, we had a budget of $2,037.27. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The budget was twenty one fifty, and we used $2,037.27. And what's left is $112.73. Correct. So, so we're going to need... Um, Gas and actually, oil. Actually, correction on that. What's the correction? The 2150 was in FY19. We had a thousand for F for 2020. All right, for for last year we had a thousand and we had brought the line item down to a thousand. Yeah, but when we went, when you and I went to the board, we had we had presented to the board of selectmen a thousand, and in Merrill McGrath boosters they. Boost okay. us up that night, remember, to, to two thousand dollars or twenty one hundred during the meeting. Okay. So we could get the chainsaws and any other tools that we needed to do the job professionally and safely um, out on the trails. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. Okay. It does. All right. So what's left is the one hundred and twelve dollars and seventy three cents. So out of that, we're going to need gas and oil when we go to use that, and maybe replacing gloves or hearing or hearing protection as provided through the course of the year so do we leave it at 112 dollars or do we add 
Um, so I would always keep some money in there for even I like agree. a shovel that breaks or something else that might right. be more expensive. So I, I would I would at <clears throat> least leave you know somewhere between three and five hundred dollars in there. So should we up another, make it to a four hundred dollars even, or just a uh, four hundred and twelve dollars and seventy three cents? So I'm listening. If we leave the one twelve in there, and we make a budget for three hundred dollars for fixing small things potentially and oil and gas, um, we ask for three hundred. We have the the overage of one hundred and twelve this year, so we'll have four hundred and twelve in there if I understand correctly. I don't want to make things too complicated, but I'd like to bring up the idea of moving the budget, which was twenty one fifty, and uh, we, we did talk about potentially paying a. a a meeting minute taker. So my, my and again, not to make things too common, but to take some of this money and put it aside, keep the same budget, but put it aside for a, a meeting minute payment for someone. Well, this is for uh, equipment maintenance. Then you, what you're talking about, because we pay for professional services, that would fall on the professional services then. So that's where that would, $3,000 that you're talking about would have to go. Unless we just had another line item for, you know, whether we decided to pay a third party like some of the other boards do, or if we paid one of our members to actually take notes um, to save well, money. We, uh, Go maybe ahead. point of order there. Right. So uh, Elvis actually condensed the number of line items that we had on our budget. Mm -hmm. um, we used to have like maybe eight or ten, and now we have, it looks like, four. Four, right there. correct. Yeah, I remember that. So we, you know, I would say that should be like a sub-line item under other professional services. I'd agree with that. And, or, I mean, the way it says other, it should just say professional services. That's actually a very good question you bring up, uh, Mr. Dickinson. Can you put sub-line items? I mean, it would be nice if we had a professional line items and then the you know sub line items that would say just like we did here water test lake host so it was so no they, that's how it's listed it, this is i mean if you want to oh, see it that's how it, that's how it was presented to the oh, okay. board selectmen i believe ah okay sorry i was looking at something a little different then um i mean we'd have to double check with elvis to see if that's exactly how he sends it but i believe that yeah yeah I just have to verify that I guess on a high level let me just ask the question what do you guys think about either asking for a professional note taker like again some of other committees already do currently or instead of paying someone something fairly high in price paying a volunteer already on the board whether it's an alternate to take some of those notes because it is it is quite tedious and it does stress out some of our members who do a very good job about it um, what are your thoughts on just that idea I'm, beyond, I'm not sure yet because, I mean, we've been going through this so many years without a note taker, and we've always done pretty good on it, you know. But is it um, fair, is, I guess, is what I'm getting at um, compared to other boards? Well, there's a lot of things that are not fair, but I've never heard anyone really complain about it. We just went and did it, you know. Everyone just got – usually did it for one term, and uh, we do always vote for someone else to do it in the next year, you know, and you went in circles. You know, I don't see – I don't want to spend another $3,000 – you know, on on that kind of service, when we've done pretty good over the last eight years that I've been here, seven years, you know, but we do have gotten bigger and and we actually we do a lot more than we were doing before, you know. So I mean, having a note taker would help out, you know. But right now you can see there is only three here, and if we were going to have a note taker, that note taker would not be here. So. The person who would take the notes, one of us three, would we get paid for that? When you're already going to be paying a note taker, do we get that pay? See what I'm saying? Well, I would, I would say that they'd only get paid uh, on a per meeting basis. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if that person doesn't show up for the meeting, does that mean one of us three people who take the notes get paid for that? Probably. It's a fair, you know? fair point. I guess my. Yeah, I would say yes. Your your concerns are, are very valid. And, or, or, or or someone just tries to do it, and hands off the. Um, if there's a designated note taker at that point, then you know that person can always we could do a draft, 
hand it off to the professional note taker and the professional note taker can use the combination of that and the video to complete the notes. That's a, that's right. a very it, good point. Um, I, the, one, the thing that concerns me is that I'm more, you know, we can't always, be, like right now, Elliot Veloso's our minute taker, but you can't bank on him doing that next year. 100%. No, he, we, he's already said he, we already agreed he's not going to do it next year. And so, and, and people have done the notes differently, and, you know, from year to year as well. When Ten Quinn did them, you know, they, he always limited it to one page. Right. I, I think that, or maybe two at most. Maybe that's a little too truncated. Looking back at it, it you know, those old notes, it's hard to decipher on some of you know, some of what we actually said, talked about. Because you have to go back to the video to review everything to see what yeah, was done. Yeah, yeah. So, it, it, you know, to have a nice balance maybe, you know, you, we don't need to transcribe every word in here because we're not doing uh, – it's not like the zoning board where we're having uh, semi-judicial decisions yeah. um, for the most part. So we don't have to transcribe every word. But to have something that's maybe a little more elaborate than a two-page. So I well, here's the minute, thing. Then Go that, ahead. But uh, you know, I think that it's good to have minutes that are clear and professionally done. That's one of the reasons why I usually say it's better for someone else to do it than myself. Right. Because I know that that's not my forte. Here's the other thing. I I don't want to really vote on that tonight. And the reason I'm saying I think this is something that's going to have to come up next year. I think we're on short notice of doing this. I think to take a vote on that and decide on that tonight, I know we want to put a Warren article in for seven members, okay? I actually don't have an issue with that because having seven members will be allow us to have a note taker, you know, with that, and it can go in circles. I think that should be um, decided next year, whoever – the chairman is to decide about having a note taker and putting that into. I don't think we have enough information tonight to really make that decision um, about bringing on those services of $3,000, whatever the case may be. I think that's something that we should just have a conversation with the board of selectmen and see what they think and what's their opinion about that before we move forward. So I'd rather that we okay. table that for now and whoever chaired next year we can go back and look at those notes and decide in January right away. Well, you can't because you have to decide, wait until the – well, anyways, the chair can decide next year what to do, you know? So, yeah. So, I guess I, I'm I, – it makes sense. No, what, what you're saying makes right. sense. I, um, the only counterpoint to that just to put on the table before we, I guess, move on with it um, was if – I guess the reason I was bringing this topic up because – if we don't, you know, move this money into another line item like that as an example, right. my thought would be we would just give back that money. And we just want to be careful about how much money that, you know, how much budget we relinquish um, <coughs> because getting it back would be a lot harder. So I just want to, you know, shifting line items is a lot easier um, than asking for it fresh next year. I guess that was my main concern. So uh, we weren't going to be asking for more in our budget. We were just simply taking our small maintenance budget we have now, knowing we're not going to need anything, and move it somewhere else. That was just the thought. Right. The problem, though, is that obviously, based on our calculations, we're going to be substantially higher than we've ever been. Right. So, I, I think that is going to require potentially some uh, discussion with the board of selectmen, and definitely some discussion with the budget committee. Okay. So, so you're saying so we should? We I should mean, we, the budget committee might indeed get into a little bit more detail if the, you know depending on which qu questions are asked okay fair so, so you're saying because we're over this year we should well, yeah use that money to help our over. I mean it, luckily we're in a good financial I mean we've had years where we've been asked to keep level funding or even reduce funding by 20 you know 20 something percent because of the recent, you know, when we hit the recession years, we were asking, asked to reduce budget. And, but, you know, luckily we're in some good financial years. So 
now is probably the time if we have to to expend more than we had hopefully for a short period of time until we have better fund organization if you want to call it that so um, okay I, I guess I agree so that might justify it the increase for this year and with hopes that we wouldn't have a second pond treatment and we'd actually have a surplus at the end, you know, potentially at the end of the year that we, where we might be able to use that right. for okay. so the minute taker in the following year. So I guess we all agree then. So I, 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 yeah. I like your thoughts. Um, so we, we kind of reduce that down to what we think is actually necessary, a couple hundred dollars, like you said, for small things to repair. And we take that savings and add it to our overage for this year. Okay, so what are we going to uh, total $412.73? I, I think the the we should ask for a budget of three hundred dollars, and then we'll stack our oh. overages on it. Well, we have to give them a a a total is what it is. We don't just say one hundred twelve dollars and seventy three cents plus three hundred. We're just going to say four hundred twelve dollars total. Okay, right, Ken? That's how it works. Yeah, for some a small item like that, you want to keep it simple one line. I guess what we were just talking about though is. Do we ask for a budget of three hundred dollars, and then we take our our hundred and twelve dollar overage and just put no, the same account? No, no. Or do we ask? For no, you start. I'll give fresh. you three hundred if you ask for three hundred. Got it. Okay. Yeah, my just, my misunderstanding. Stop, yeah. stop no, when it comes fresh. to money, you got to watch out for Roger. But he wants to make sure he wants to cover every nickel. But <laughs> every nickel. <laughs> um, I mean, that's kind of what we're doing here. Okay. So that line item is done. That's why we're we're over. What? I mean, right. the only other thing that I know we need to. In past years, this was not just called small equipment. I think it was called maintenance. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we and and if we had uh, lumber costs, for instance, you know, like or the the cost for the let's see, I gotta actually backing up on that. Uh, okay, when we had Joe Undercoffler fix the signs or put up even new sign posts in previous years. Oh, yeah. That money came out of professional services oh. because we were hiring outside. You know, we were, th those services were pro being provided by someone outside the commission. So it fell under other professional services. I know you have the bridge project that you're looking at. It's going to fall. Where's that going to gonna find fall? Uh, a line item for that. I mean, I should you, you you might need to make a separate one unless you unless you rename small equipment. I, I was just gonna say, why don't you just call this conservation commission maintenance, and that will cover I, I, tool yeah, maintenance. I, I would I would yeah because you're not always gonna have small equipment in there. Yeah, so just, <clears throat> do I have to go all right to make a change like that? Do I just change it myself, or do I need to talk to Elvis and say you need to talk? Yeah, we need to submit. No, no matter what we do here, right. it, it has to go to Elvis Arena and or, or I, I, you know, last year I sat down with Elvis to for about an hour or so to crank through the numbers and make sure that he had his table correct so that okay so everything yeah the. Uh, so we're, so we're going to call the first line just Conservation Commission Maintenance. Let me write this down. Sorry so there. this is going to be, so we're looking at 06-4619-5586-2020-0. Uh, so we're going to call that. Conservation Maintenance. All right. Uh, and I'm, uh, another thing that I'm seeing here, too, just looking back at previous years, that... Okay, so if I can I uh, add, add to this, so I'm just looking back at our expenditures in FY 16, 17, and 18, and they were exceed the actual expenditures were exceeding a hundred thousand dollars on average. They're just over a hundred thousand. You know, I had like ninety nine thousand ninety six and one oh seven. Was that? For the 
three previous years of FY16, say, was 99,000 to the nearest thousand. FY17 was 96. FY18 was 107. And a lot of that, I'm taking a guess, was pond treatments. Okay. We're pushing those numbers now. So I, I'm not sure if we look back at our, let me go to, I'm just trying to see if I have my packet from last month. So let's just get the title down. So the conservation maintenance, and I just for the record, I think that would include, like we said, uh, equipment maintenance, bridge maintenance, sign maintenance, just for the record. Okay. I think that makes sense. Right now we just need to decide what value you want that to be. So that's all maintenance. Yeah, would, right. I'd, so, so you're saying rename it as maintenance? And just maintenance, yeah. It'll be, it'll be tools, so bridges, yeah. signs, you know, any kind of repetitive maintenance costs. I'm on board with that. Um, now the question B is, okay, now with that definition, what do we want the line item to be? How much? So that changes everything. If we're, but does. we have to get approval from Elvis on that. Correct. We still have to. Uh, okay. So now we're going to say they're going to call this the conservation maintenance. So that changes everything then. So if we have a. So if you're already adding four hundred dollars, you're going four hundred dollars here for just regular maintenance and stuff that oil, gas, mm -hmm. whatever, and then we have signs. Yeah, we have one sign that's three hundred. Well, not one sign. I have a quote. But we'd have to vote on that. To put in for next year budget for three hundred forty-six dollars and ninety-eight cents to have six signs made that read conservation, and then we're talking about um, a bridge. Uh, at one point, I'm saying fifteen hundred. I think that's too high. But that reasonable for a big that's bridge. A, for a for a bridge, I'm saying and I think that's high, you know. But whatever's left over will go back into the fund. You know, we're not going to go out and spend fifteen hundred. You know, but it gives us room to make sure we have. Well, yeah, you haven't accounted for everything yet. No, so you're I haven't accounted sure. for it. No. If we have to rent something. Right. You know, it, right. If we have anything to rent a that's heavy, or something. Yeah. That so cost let's call that. Up quick. So right. so with the bridge, with the the actual material maintenance that we're talking about, and some signage, which I I think the signage could go a lot higher if we did other stuff with that line item. I mean. Three thousand. Because, you know, you're talking 1500 so that's, that's two. Seven. That's really not, that won't include a heck of a lot. If we did 3000 with that line item, you know, that, that, that'll give us some. won't give us a ton, but it'll give us some. I'm going to have to explain that line item. Of course. But you have reasoning. Right, right. And yeah, one of, we're going to have to make kiosks, too, for, for Rangers and right. for um, Colbin. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to need to, yeah. you, those are just the sign costs that doesn't include post or installation right. of post or right. any of that stuff. Right. So you got to factor that in as well. And you and we had, what, like six signs that we had? Right. So you have to factor in the installation of six, you know, six posts, and that would be probably close to what Joe had done, which was roughly like $200 in so, materials. Right. So why don't we figure in? Sorry, well, why don't we do this? Top of that, I, I know, um, I know. Randy's a little stressed with the, stressed. Well, like with the how much is. Why don't we have two? I don't want to make this more complicated. Why don't we have a, what we're shooting for, and with reason, mm -hmm. and then if we absolutely cannot have that line item, what's bare minimum? No, 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 no. So you just understand, we make out a number. Yeah. Okay, and when we go to the board of selectmen, we have to explain that number. Sure. And the board of selectmen will say nay or yay, or yeah. they'll say that's too high. You'll have this. Got it. You know, so then, then by hearing our assessment of why we need that money for that project or for those services, and we explain it, they'll be able to make a better assessment saying, okay, we agree with you or we don't agree with you. Yeah. You can have the money or you can't have the money. And they'll say us, they'll tell us then what we can have and what we can't have. But of course, Ken will be by my side when I come and do this. Um, he does a very good job explaining it, and probably I'll have to do it this year. But uh, the Board of Selectmen are very good at helping me out and the Conservation Commission on making sure that we get the appropriate money that we need to do the job professionally and safely. 
Yeah. So I don't have um, um, a worry with them, you know, because their job is to protect the town. So I'm okay. All right. All right. So so you have two very good quotes here, right? That, that are actually quite right. low. Yeah. And the preliminary. So right. do you think three or four thousand dollars, which includes I, a bridge? I'm gonna signage? I'm gonna say three. I think three three thousand is appropriate. Okay. You know, so I will put um, here three thousand. Yeah, because chances are we're going to have some other incidental costs like right. paint. I still got some leftover paint, but right. we'll probably have to buy some. Right. Yeah, and, and for the viewers at home, and we used to talk about signs. I mean, you're, the, you know, the quote you have for fairly low money is for small signs. Right. These aren't huge kiosks. So in that 3,000 number, you're not even including a kiosk cut price. Right. So that's that's pretty pretty reasonable. Yeah, actually, right. We, we, haven't, we haven't done the kiosk. Are you saying that? We'll have signs, but then we'll also have kiosks. Later so, at some other yeah. point. Yeah, we can't right. afford it. Right? Or we seem to be kind of high right now. And we can't keep getting the numbers yet. But, you know, his, his quote is for a couple hundred bucks for just small metal signs. Nothing. 12 by 12 by 18s. Well, those, those, those are the ones I showed those you. Those kiosks that we made for Musquash. Ramos got those for us. Those are, were pretty. Right, I mean, not Musquash's kiosk, but the uh, mm -hmm. kiosk over at the town for us, say, yep. that wasn't very expensive at all it was maybe a couple hundred dollars tops yeah i think he but he had a couple of them made no, didn't he, he? we just have one no made. we, we'll have to go we, back we made those. them ourselves right but we i'm just talking material costs were Are you maybe talking the, the foundation the footings i mean the uh you're talking about the kiosk signs we had those made no the kiosk at the town forest we put together ourselves. I worked with Ray Jerowitz to, to make the kiosk. Okay. And Bill and some others helped actually install it. And oh, okay. All right. Installment. And actually, so, it's just, so we, we did it on our own. Same thing with the Woodland Drive kiosk. We, we did that. Actually, that, yeah, we did that with the other materials that we had left over. And, and to throw okay. one, one more thing in the mix, too, as we talked about earlier. Um, I, I think we should be good. Let's, let's leave it at 3000 and move on because we said earlier this will be a transition year, and we need to remember we have almost $12,000 from the tree harvest that next year we will budget for proper kiosks and good signage and right. so forth. So right. I think your signs will be good for the temporary, and then next year we can budget for bigger kiosks. But we probably don't need to talk about kiosks now. Well, it's, it's separate. I mean, it, it's going to take a – well – if we create a map of the property, we don't necessarily need to post the map of the property the first year, I yeah, guess. Because we don't have any we're gonna be We're going to be working on them. That's my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can do it next year with our forestry money. Okay. So, all right. So that's good. Mm, let's go on to conservation, association, dues, and fees. That says here we're at the... Uh, that, that's a state... Um, that's determined by the state. That's determined. Those, those, okay, at state. All right. So, I mean, right now, if not, you know, not having, Urena usually looks that up and not having that information in front of us, we'd have to just carry what we carried last year, which was, yeah, what, 30, 1327? Yeah, and there's 277 left. So, so was that, oh, so it was actually right. It was less this right. year than it was the previous year for some reason. Okay, so that line item stays the same based on what Tarina said. So that is that is it then, because we just did professional services. And what We have um, conservation notices, news, and news ads. And when I was reading this, I um, is that in there, or did we remove that? I don't see that in here. That's on. Which one is, what year is that? Um, 2019. That's May. But we, it's, it's last year's budget then, right? Oh, that's 2018. No, that's his 2019. 19, yeah. But <coughs> doesn't the budget switch over in July? Yeah. So this was last year's budget. Yeah. So that's, no, I, that's not in here right now. Okay. So that's probably what, how right. we clean things up then. Right. Yeah, I know that's one of the one of the things they want to do. Okay. The, there was one other line item on here. What is it? For some reason. It was uh, registration fees. Is it? Yeah. So yeah, registration fees. So we fees. have. Okay. Yeah, which we had. Uh, Two hundred dollars. And that pretty much only Actually, covers... Actually, that, that was only 200 Yeah, and the $70 left. Oh, because we had 500 We had, We had asked for 500 in, tw in 2020. 
And I think so, Elvis had us keep it at five, it, it, raise it to 500. Raise it to 500? We, we condensed some of the other line items. And, you know, if you have, like, for instance, uh, three people go to the annual meeting at $60 a piece. That's 180 right there. If three people go to the spring meeting, I'm not sure what the fee is for that, but it's probably at least $60 or maybe a little bit more. Could, so that could be 300 and if you have 300 plus 180, you're at almost 500 right there. And with that, just to top it off, if we do graciously enough get our seats back, uh, I would highly recommend the new folks take some of those courses because they are phenomenal. They're, they're very, very good. So I would expect that we, may, we would certainly have some registration fees. Yeah, we should, yeah, that would be, that's a good idea. That if any new people who come on board, they'll have to go through a new program, if I'm correct, with um, Chairman Mormon, that they be brought up to speed of what we're doing, regulations, and maybe any training, training programs that we have, they should go out to. So yeah. it's, it's good to keep that. So, yeah, that's a good idea. I just want to put a note on that to Dave Mormon. So I think. Yeah, I mean, I think right now that, isn't an expense though that that yeah. that initial part it but attending the uh annual meeting is mm -hmm. and that's where they're going to get the bulk of their education is at that conference in november yeah definitely as well as doing whatever that you know it, right having a attending a a, a municipal um law session if we have it again but that you know that would be a multi-board thing so we wouldn't have to budget for it ourselves uh the only other line item i had for my own clarification on one of these i, I saw gis mapping for two twenty five hundred. Yeah, that I, comes out of professional services that came out of this year i believe correct? yeah and that um should have been in this month's um that will be in that this month's budget Okay. Um, financial budget. So when I come okay. down here tomorrow, I will get that. And when I get that out of it, I'll email to you guys. Perfect. I think that's all the questions I have. I think <clears> we went <throat> over everything pretty well. All right. Ken, can yeah. I call you tomorrow? Say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to have yeah, to call we, you tomorrow. Yeah, we, we, can, we can work on it at a right. time. Sure. So uh, before um, we close out the meeting, um, I just want to go over two things. One is uh, these lanyards. Um, as far as I know, you guys don't have to wear the, we don't have to wear the lanyards here. I just wore it because I, I brought it in. But I want to let you know <clears throat> these lanyards do help out. And the reason why I'm saying that, I had to go down to the fire station um, on Saturday to go and take a look, take care of that lock up at Town Forest. And having the, the lanyard and presented it to the um, fire dispatcher down there was able to make any appropriate phone calls and know who I was and and what to do which which does make things a little bit easier um, for town employees when dealing with people who work for um, different parts of committees all right the second thing is <clears throat> I had to talk to um, a resident in town about using their property Having this lanyard when I walked up to the door, introduced myself, show them my ID of who I was from the town. They wanted to take a picture of my, um, of my ID. They were more than happy to. They were happy to see the ID, you know. That's a good so point. they say, oh, okay, I know who you are. You're Randy Brownrigg from the Conservation Commission. That's great. That's and it point. makes the conversation and the resident feel a little bit better. So I, I mean, I'm in support of these, um, these badges, you know? So I just wanted to put that out there, how that helps out for our residents to feel better when they see someone walking up to the door and we can show them some type of identification. So I do like that. The second thing is that, um, just to let people know that there was um, some people that were pardoning at Town Forest on Friday. And they had a fire. Well, it was campfire. Friday before last. Friday, Friday before last. Excuse me. 
and they had a campfire. And you're not allowed to have campfires on any of our property in conservation. It's just against the rules. Um, they were drinking beer up there, and um, you can't be doing that either. Um, the fire um, is a huge issue. Um, you don't know if that fire is going to, if it's out properly. Um, that fire was still smoldering sa um, Saturday morning. Even though when you kick sand over it, you're just covering hot embryos. And when you leave the area, you don't know what's going to happen afterwards. So you really, so the people who were around there that called the fire department, thank you very much because they went up there, and they got through the gate, they went out there, they cleaned it up, they put the fire out, they stood around, made sure it was correct, and they left. Anytime you see something like that, you have to report it because the last thing we want in this town is any of our conservation land or our town forest or our town to burn. Um, so thank you for the people that call the fire department. Thank you for the fire department to um, going out there and investigate and uh, going, uh, I think, above and beyond. I appreciate that you're protecting our town and our town forest. Um, so that's all I want to say on that. Excellent. Um, I'll go with Ken first. Do you want to put anything out? Uh, well, the only <clears throat> thought I had was um, you had asked about trying to get additional stewards potentially or that's where the conversation went and we just need to do some research maybe you know I can look back at my files or if Brett knows I know it maybe did you, Brett did you I mean, maybe ask your dad if Pelham utilized the um, volunteer stewards for some trail projects mm -hmm. okay a lot of times, get, you know, lack, for lack of a better term for that group of people, I um, mean, we could, we should start getting to be active in posting our work days so that we can get people from other communities that want to volunteer on trail projects for what we want to do since we got, seems like a good amount in the queue. Question on that. That's something we could probably send to Lisa Newt that can put that on our website when we have trail work days. Yeah, I mean, well, we had we actually had the last one on the town calendar, right? Um, so I think that was good, and I think maybe that's in there now to repeat every fourth Sunday of the month. But this is something different. This is to get just the message out to that particular group through their website, whatever that is. Um, yeah, we talked about that on the Sunday. So I don't know if, I mean, I thought that Brett might know about it, potentially. You'll have to explain that to him. He probably does, but. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, at the very moment, I'm not yeah, sure. Right so off, we, right we, yeah. we can so talk we later. Gotta, and we gotta, yeah, we got to look in our, pull together some resources right. and sure. get that pulled Do you want to talk about cleanup day? Get oh, what we did? Yeah, on Sunday. Well, I guess in a nutshell, you know, we had a pretty quick cleanup day because there was just a small group of us, but. We did get, this was the first time we were able to use some of our power tools, so <laughs> we did cut some of the trees out in the front to around the sign and you know back towards where people park to have a little more space to negotiate getting in and out of the parking area and for other safety purposes. And then we proceeded to take down at least a limb or two, if not a couple more trees, in select spots along the trails where that needed to happen. Um, we cleaned up some glass along one trail over the, on the edge of the field that had been sitting there for years and got spread out a little bit more um, during the work that was done. Uh, the, we used the brush cutter to cut, recut the trail down to the key, uh, what do they call that, the, the wildlife blind and maybe all the way down to the pond itself. Um, and I even went out a little bit afterwards just to do some hand pruning on the trail, the permanent trail. It's going to need more, but you know, I did a quick pass through there before the game started. <laughs> um, and what else did we do? So, yeah, it was a good start. There's still work to be, you know, uh, 
Oh, we could easily do another work day out there, even yeah. though we need this really shift our focus to working on next month out yeah. at the Pelham Road, you know, uh, uh, property to get ready for the um, ribbon cutting that we wanted to do. That's scheduled for the 26th, 27th? Well, Bill, I think the way it was left at the last meeting is that we let Bill correct decide. Because our next yeah meeting, work on it, and he was going to try to find a day in early November. I thought it was this month. No, he was going to push it um, because he wanted to make sure. I think that most of the leaves were down, and okay, so, and it, yeah. Yeah, so that wasn't and it wasn't conf and so that wasn't conflicting with any of the holidays or holiday that we have so it, I think he was going to come back to us on the 21st and tell us what day in November it was going to be scheduled for that's what I recall okay so and then we also have yeah we have a little you know another um, why are we here? Do we want to schedule another trail work day? that needs some trees removed as well? Why are we here? Do we want to schedule question? another work day? Because our next meeting won't be until the twenty first of of October. Correct. Because right. a Columbus Day is a holiday, so and town hall is closed. So you're thinking that you want to do one? If we're going to do another work day, do we want to do it the twenty before the twenty first? Or after the 21st. If we're going to do after the 21st, then we can wait. Well, we have been doing the last, the, the fourth uh, Sunday of the month, which would be right after our One, two, three, four. meeting. That, that would be the 26th, you're saying? And be so. careful, because I think our, our our New Hampshire Conservation Commission meeting is on the 21st. Uh, no, no, not our meeting, sir. Um, the actual New Hampshire Association. That's on oh. the 2nd. So Second of November. November. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're right. right. Sorry. I just want to make sure we. Yeah, that we can. Yeah, because of that, and, and I have something else going on the third. I can't do anything that right. weekend. So and we'll we'll wait till the next meeting to uh, maybe we can schedule on the 26. Well, I think we should we should make sure that it's posted on the town calendar for the 26th. Okay. So do you want to? Because do we, we will already be too late. Do you want to do it now? Yeah, yeah, I think Put we should the stay the course. Okay. The twenty yeah, sixth. I'm just thinking even out loud right now. I mean I, I am booked next Sunday. Okay. Then the following Sunday's Columbus Day weekend, then we have the meeting. So are we so. gonna do another trail day at Town Forest? No, it would be at the Pelham Pelham sixty eight road. Yeah. Okay, so it's a trail day at sixty eight Pelham. Yeah, that's at least where we should start. And, we'll, and just to you know, finish that thought right, we need to go back out to the town forest to sink the signposts into the ground and, right. get, and get some signs made and put those up too. Um, nine to one, uh, an average. Correct. Okay. I'm sorry, forgive me. That date was again. Um, twenty six. Twenty six. Thank you. Anything else, Ken? before we move on no I, that's probably good for tonight okay thanks Brett I'm gonna let you close it out all right um, I wasn't there but I want to say thanks again to our member Jen she had a, a hike at uh, Kimball Hill Town Forest I believe this last month had a great showing from the pictures had another 20 or 30 people go out I think yourself was there um, and people got to see what the harvest looked like so I think that was very good for the community I applaud her and her work and and she said there was actually a lot of new faces who came out. So that Hike Hudson's really taking off. So congratulations. The next one is on October 6th, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And this is a group hike of the uh, New Hampshire state lands in Hudson. Um, just uh, stay tuned to the Hike Hudson Facebook page for where we'll be actually parking and walking. We're expecting a fairly large crowd, so we want to make sure it's safe to park enough cars and, and where we'll do the hike. But that should be uh, pretty exciting for the next one coming up, and it should be very pretty. Uh, that's all I had for you, sir. All right, so I want to thank everyone for listening. I want to thank you guys for showing up tonight, and at 824, we are done. Thank you.